Hi everybody, welcome back. Tony again with Shinsho Yoga, and for this video I'd like to talk a little bit about Savasana, and it's pretty simple. It's okay to fall asleep in Savasana. There's a lot of teachers I've run into over the years uh, that I'd go to their classes, and at the end of the class in Savasana they would be very regimented on it in that they would say don't fall asleep in Savasana. You can't fall asleep in Savasana. You need to relax but you gotta stay awake. Don't fall asleep. I don't know where this came from. I don't know who taught these people this because in everything that I know and everything that I've learned in yoga it's simply not true. Now each teacher has their own reasons. These teachers may have a specific reason why they want you to do this that in all these times they've never explained to me. But it's just kind of seen for a lot of teachers that there is a some rule that you can't fall asleep in Savasana, which isn't true at all. Uh, a teacher I went to one time, uh, was a, she was a decent teacher, just very loud. And in Savasana, she kept yelling, literally yelling. She's like, now you need to relax and let go, but don't fall asleep. And I was, they're like, I can't even relax. You're too loud. <laughs> I didn't go back to that class. Um, Savasana is corpse pose, right? That's, that's, that's what that means. It's the final relaxation at the end of our practice. After we have applied the medicine that we have, that is yoga, we now need to now let that medicine work. And that's what we do with savasana. Right? If you're in especially any type of vigorous class, you need to now come back down, let everything you've done, all of that energy that you've moved, because that's one of the things we're doing is moving energy, if not one of the prime things we're doing is moving energy, moving prana, chi, ki, however you want to call it, through the body, opening up these gates in the body, getting that fascia re-opened uh, uh, up so it can all move again. Now you have to let the body rest and you have to let that medicine work. It's like, to use a silly example, if you take NyQuil. What do you do after you take NyQuil? Do you go out and run a marathon? Do you go out and uh, operate heavy machinery? No. You go to sleep. So we do in Savasana. We lay down. We breathe. We be still. And we just sink into the mat. Now, understand, Savasana doesn't mean sleep. So it's not as if you're coming into Savasana going, okay, nap time, right? And we're going to try to go to sleep. That's not the goal of Savasana. But if you relax into it so much, especially if your teacher, say, does like a yoga nidra at the end of the class, and you get into this deep relaxation after through this, you've challenged and invigorated your body, you need that rest. You need to let the medicine work. Staying tense, staying awake, staying wired does not let the body come back down. In yoga, we build up and we come back down, right? That's it. Just like a breath, right? We let it build and we let it come back down. Yoga is medicine. That's what this is. It's an ancient medicine. Right? ancient spirituality, ancient medicine, it's all the same thing. And when we've practiced, we've done our class, we've applied our medicine, we need to now let that medicine work. I have another video about a post-yoga routine, what to do afterwards, where I encourage people to get something good to drink, get something nourishing to eat, take a hot bath, relax for a little while, don't run right off into your life. Now, in the world we live in, that's very difficult for a lot of people to do. They may go for their 7 a.m. yoga class and then rush right off to work or whatever you're doing. The best way to do it, though, in my opinion, as a teacher, everybody has their own, but everything that I have learned is when you're done with your class, rest. Rest. Allow the body to heal. Allow that medicine to work. And that's what we're doing in Savasana. We are just coming into this posture where we no longer have to move. We need to no longer do anything. We just need to breathe and sink. 
And in all my classes, as always, we do the same thing with our mind. We let the thoughts arise, we let them pass by, and we return to the breath. We just keep doing that. And we let that medicine work and sink. And if you fall asleep, that's fine. Just don't snore. <laughs> that's a tough one. I've had some people snore who were really loud. And uh, then we're not being mindful of the other people in the class. So if you are a snorer and you know you're going to do that, then a good idea is to just relax and stay awake. Or maybe you take a neck roll and put it under your neck so your head drops back and your throat stays open. Often when I come into Savasana, I use a, uh, a, a whole setup with blocks and blankets. I come into a supported heart bench, right, where I will, um, well, somewhat like I come in, my legs come into Bhattakanasana. I use blocks to support the edges. I bring a, a blanket underneath my mid back to push it up and then I roll up a blanket and put it under my neck so it stays back and I fall in like this. So I do this whole supported Savasana to let the body be opens, right, in the process. You don't have to do that. You can just lay there, right? That's really all you have to do is just lay there. And if you fall asleep, it's okay. That's it. Just let the medicine work. So if you have a teacher that doesn't want you to fall asleep in Savasana, I would never tell you not to follow the direction of your teacher. Um, but if that's not working for you, or you've never been able to, and you've never felt that kind of deep relaxation and healing you get from that, maybe you try a different class, and one where the teacher allows you to do that, and just let that medicine work. So, as always, in the end, just breathe and follow your breath. Let the thoughts arise, let them pass by, and return to the breath. Over and over and over. Thanks again for watching. Namaste.